So here's example number four here. So this, I'm going to add a little bit more of a twist here and show an example with trade and what happens when a tariff is actually imposed. So graph what would happen if an importing country imposes a tariff in order to protect the corn industry from low world prices. Who gains? Who loses? What's the dead weight loss? And then is this allocatively efficient? So I, I asked a multitude of questions here, but kind of want to mirror a question that you actually might see on the AP exam. So let's take a demand here of corn, D1. And let's take a look at the supply of corn, S1. So here's Q. And here is P. And here's corn. Not the best looking corn, but here's that's a visual here. Um, so you have the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price here. And again, once again, this is the domestic supply. And here is the domestic demand. Now remember, if, if it's an importing country, the world price is going to be below the equilibrium price. So let's draw the, the world price below. So we'll call this PW here. So graph would happen if the importing country imposes a tariff in order to protect the corn industry from low world prices. So when the government imposes a tariff, what's going to happen here? Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, just so that there's actually enough space here, I'm going to draw the PW a little bit lower just so that uh, I give myself a little bit more space here. So I'm going to do this right now here. I'm going to draw the, the world price really low. So in this case, the government's looking at this world price you know, how can American corn producers compete? So the government's going to try to step in and try to impose a tariff. And how would, actually, how would a tariff actually look, look like? Again, a, a tariff is a tax that adds to the price of the world price here. So here, let's draw here what happens. This is the price of the world plus the tariff here. So this might get a little bit more complicated here, but let's draw this area as A here, this triangular area. This quadrilateral here will be B. Um, this quadrilateral here, quadrilateral will be a C, and this will be a D. And this area here will be an E, and this area here will be uh, an F. Okay. So what happens here? So the the um, well, we'll check. Take a look at three things here. See the uh, the CS in autarky. So there's no trade whatsoever. The CS is going to be A. The PS in autarky is going to be B plus C plus D. Okay, so that's the original situation, no trade whatsoever. With trade, so under uh, when you let the free markets reign and you let the world prices uh, uh, dominate, so the consumer surplus with trade, so there's no tariffs whatsoever. Go ahead and use red for this here. So there's no tariffs. What you what you have is uh, the consumer surplus is going to be A plus B plus E plus C plus F. The consumer or the producer surplus with trade is you just have uh, D. Okay, so you you definitely help out the consumers, but understandably the pursu uh, the producers are harmed, and so the government might want to step in and you know help out in an in infant industry, so to speak. So um, in this particular case, um, the government here has decided, okay, we're going go ahead and going to add the tariff here. So this is uh, consumer surplus with trade. But we're going to add a tariff here, what, it, what ends up happening. And we're going to look at the producer surplus with trade plus tariff. So you add this tariff here, 
And what ends up happening is that um, you basically take away that, that C and F area. So your consumer surplus with the tariff is going to be A plus B plus E. Now keep in mind, between having no trade at all versus having trade with the tariff, uh, having the trade with the tariff is actually going to be better. But what's better than that in terms of uh, total surplus argument? You know, don't have the tariff at all. But at least you gain that uh, uh, B and E area here. Uh, but you do lose on uh, on the C and F area. Now, what is the producer surplus with trade? This is the 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 argument to protect the producers here. So it's C plus D. So the gain is that you gain that C area, and and with with that you're helping out uh, the pr domestic producers from the unfair low prices, or, or so the argument goes from a government standpoint. Yeah. Now, this doesn't come, out, come with any consequences, though, because when you have the tariff, uh, you, you have some consequences there. So what ends up happening is that you end up having less trade here. So let's call this Q2 here and Q3 here. And so this area here is the dead weight loss. So dead weight loss. So this area is also dead weight loss. Why? Because the new area of trade, um, again, let's say this is uh, you know Q4 here. And this here is Q5 here. So trade without tariff is going to be, actually this is Q5 right here, is this area here, um, Q4 minus Q5 here, shown on the graph here. So this is the amount of imports. Okay, so that's the amount of imports. Okay, so what what ends up happening, you know, trade with tariffs. Now you have, you know, um, this is Q2 minus Q3. So Q2 minus Q3. So this area here, or this uh, quantity here, is a new amount of trade. So this area between Q QF and Q3 uh, you lose that entire amount of trade with the tariff. And you also lose the Q2, uh, between the Q2 and the Q4. So tariffs are definitely uh, not allocatively efficient. So who gains from this? Well, definitely the, the domestic producers gain because they gain that C area here. Uh, who loses from this? Well, the consumer. They lose out on the, uh, on the C, F, and also the deadweight loss here. Um, another person who gains from this, the, the government actually collects this F uh, amount in, in terms of revenue. And uh, the final question, uh, because we know the deadweight loss is the two triangular areas created from the tariff. And the final question, is this allocatively efficient? Now again, we know that uh, allocatively efficient equals max CS plus PS or total surplus. So when you add a tariff, is that allocatively efficient? And, and this is a very clear and resounding no. Not allocatively efficient. And why not? It reduces total surplus. And that's absolutely what you don't want to have uh, in, in terms of international trade. If the goal is to try to increase total surplus, then you absolutely want to, you, you want to stay away from any tax or tariff because that's going to reduce total surplus. But it is understandable and a lot of countries uh, do this. They're going to add a tariff to try to protect certain infant industries uh, to try to compete with uh, the world market. Um, but that's basically uh, today's lecture on consumer producer surplus, uh, deadweight loss, and in international trade. 
I uh, hope you were able to pick up a, a couple of things here and there to get you that five on the AP exam. Uh, thank you for listening into this lecture.